the slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness, if you wanna play tough, and wanna hate this, I'll show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness, if you wanna play tough, and wanna hate this, I'll always show up, and make a statement, I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness, if you wanna play tough, and wanna hate this, I'll always show up, and do so instinctive and so passionate every word i move so descriptive like an adjective i got a vendetta against people who patented it being negative when you should be getting after it i got facts over facts over tracks this and that spitting slow spitting fast i could roast i could gas think i'm okay at last but i don't know if that can erase all the past and the pettiness oh reflection of the emptiness hilarious you think you're with my time you're delirious mysterious because you are behind a fake exterior inferior you know i'll always be a bit superior get off of me this ain't no humble brag i want you to hear words you can say them back i want you to feel free from the chains at last and to believe in what you got it was built to last yeah now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent. Mental health is confidence, dreams and some honestness. I'm not here to save the day, that's for you to take away. I could play a million mind games, but instead I say something not illogical, something that is topical. Rub it on and watch it go, make yourself unstoppable. Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible. If you just believe, you could be so remarkable. Thoughts in my head, a collage and they spread. I'll be great one day, going off of my meds. No, I'm not giving up, no, I'm not giving in. I will make it to the top, taking off in the wind. I gotta make it. I'm saving every day to taste it. I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it. I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages of bacon. Modern kingdom for the taking. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. Good morning, Cardboard Warriors. Thanks for hopping in here and hanging out. It is official. Good well, it's not morning, official, official. Warriors. We're still waiting for, as I guess, LSS to actually update the document online, the Living Legend document, which I thought would be done today, right? Is it every Monday or is it every other Monday? I don't know. But, uh, Bromai. The Empress Bromai is ll Living Legend. And market prices on some of those cards, you know, Flamescale Furnace and Marvels and things like that are already starting to see like like what seems like going to be waves of people listing their product for sale. Um, quantities have increased pretty, pretty high on, on a lot of these things compared to what they were like 30 percent, 25 percent. So it's pretty good. It's typically, it's typically Monday afternoon. Well, it is Monday afternoon in in uh, New Zealand, but I guess. I guess it's in their evening that they dropped that information. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of ProQuest. ProQuest Nation was going on uh, last weekend. It seemed like everybody had a great time. People were at Battle Hardened Atlanta as well. We dropped new spoilers. We'll check out those two new spoilers and kind of metagame what they could be doing. I think they're, you know, expansion slot cards that are giving some specialization support to some heroes. So we definitely got to check that out and uh, theorize what's going on there. So here we are. Uh, we'll switch over and we got... Dromai, and then they got the hellos. Good morning to everybody out there. We've got um, Sergeant Rob popping in here first. Brute Lee Dell, 
JCH Jedi Games, and Leroy Jenkins. Thank you guys for hanging out and saying hello. Appreciate you. All right. Here we go. We're, we're, we're here. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Dromai can suck my... Um, no, Dromai, actually, I would say that um, of all the recent heroes that Living Legend did, you know what I mean? Of all the recent heroes that, that attained Living Legend, I would have to say, for me personally, Dromai was the least polarizing uh, and the most fair to play against. I I have I've probably, I, I don't know, I don't track every game I ever play, but I'm pretty sure I was positive win-loss ratio into Dromai. I play mostly Bravo or Reinar um, for my CC matches. And obviously I had poppers for days. As long as I can manage the board state properly, manage the wards, kind of beat them down over time. If I played smart and patiently and did the right things, I could typically pull out the win there. Um, but my first CC hero is now gone. She was super fair till Tome. So even, even with Tome, I think Tome just allowed her to do kind of like the cool shit she was supposed to do in a way. That, that's how I feel about Tome. I had no problem with Tome. I had I had no problem with um, uh, the the Tome. I, I, why am I? I don't know why the name is escaping me. The red Tome that allows you to draw two and then pitch two. It was perfect. It was absolutely perfect for her. Um, it's also, by the way, Tome is also extremely good in Emperor. It's like a must play in Emperor. And um, I'm, I'm I'm with you, Sloop Dupe. I've already bought my rainbow foil copies when they were like probably the most expensive they'll ever be in my life. Um, so I don't, I'm at this point, like I'm already like sunk cost fallacy, I'm done. <laughs> if they go lower, they go lower. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna be able to sell mine for anything more unless they come out with something new. And that's another question. Like, do you guys think that, that Dromai is gonna come back? Will they bring back Dromai? I know that they mentioned that they're gonna bring back um, dragons or like, uh, uh, I guess an illusionist that can play dragons possibly that they know that dragons were very popular amongst people so maybe they bring it back I don't know I would love to have I would love to have them back because I love the dragons and I think they're cool and I, I'm kind of like weirded that I didn't ever play Dromai but maybe I'll like learn to play it for the living legend format or something uh, but yeah there's Dromai the official update isn't there but we've got multiple multiple reports of people coming in saying that uh they won a pq or something on um dromai so she's definitely going to ll uh, apparently she's important to the story kind of saw the dead emperor and all that yeah yeah and the dragons will be back yeah i mean so that's sloop i don't know what's going on with that dude i feel like there's so much of the story that is being like hidden from fruition Almost to the point where I feel like LSS had to stop expanding the story the direction that they wanted to to release some extra like some extra sets here or there because maybe they were going too fast. I don't know, man. It seems uh, it seems so weird that like even if you go to let me go here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Like even if I go to Heroes and I go to the stories on the recent Heroes. Like Victor's story is not even even up on the um, on the website either. Uh, where is Victor? Well, I guess he's not here. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Where's Victor? There he is. <clears throat> wow, I'm at the wrong section. There are story sections that are blank, like with no information. That you should be able to do. Nate and I talked about how armory deck products allow for living legend rework heroes more quickly. What do you mean by that, Ted? Like, you mean like if you want to get in and play a living legend hero, you can buy an armory deck and it's already built for you? Or do you mean that they can add cards and abilities and like weapons and equipment that will make the hero more viable in living legend format? Is that what you're saying? So, like, they know that Dromai can't beat Starvo, right? For instance. And so they go ahead and they give her some more dragons or some more new weapons or something to be able to be more competitive in that format. Is that what you're saying? It seems a good... Oh, what's up, Vinny? This is a sad day? I don't know. I mean, it's a sad day for some. I think... I feel like... Um, I don't know. I feel like we all knew this was like impending doom here. I mean, she's definitely at the top. I think, you know, what's crazy is that Fi's already 780. Hmm. Fives at 70, 80. We might have the 
entire uh blowout of of draconic here from cc soon new versions of old heroes all right i mean you guys gotta remember though if you do a new hero version with new hero ability text you're introducing you, you like think about the the play testing to do that though right you've now got to like go through every single card basically in existence you know the generics and the class cards and the the talented cards and test them against all the other things to verify that it's still going to work and that it's going to work the way expected do you think that the developers that their their focus would be on adding like a new hero ability for living legended heroes in an armory deck product. I don't know. I don't, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to say no. I just want to think like of alternatives of like, is that a good use of time and resources to put a hero that's already living legended and to take the time to actually develop into it for the living legend format? I don't know. I don't know. What's up, Catfish? How you doing, boys? New hero card for her. No, I, uh, so. No, I think he means new version of old heroes like Prism. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think we have some. I think we have some crossed wires here, because LSS can bring living legend heroes back with army decks. Oh, you're, okay. I see. Okay, so you guys are saying the opposite. You're saying you don't develop it for living legend. You develop a new version to throw into CC. Now that would make more sense. I would put time and effort into like that for sure. Um. Yeah, I mean, isn't that what the whole Living Legend system has always been about? Like, I, have we not seen that done time and time and time again um, already? It, it, that that absolutely makes sense to me. You would just look into the future and say, let's make a new hero. I think I've been saying that for a while, that the whole purpose of them, when they originally increased the Living Legend points per event, that the whole purpose of that was so that they could, they could basically cycle out old heroes of the current system and then they can build new sets and new heroes even if they're the same hero name they can make new stuff so that they can basically take a, a seismic shift of the entire meta of flesh and blood and change it got in at 3 a.m oh man you guys did you guys drive overnight or did you um did you like get a quick like motel and like sleep for a couple hours and then head home yeah that's the only problem rob about driving to events that are like 10 15 you know hours away from your house it is um it's brutal man on the 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 two the two days there and the two days back is brutal to play in an event for like one day you got a shock charmers mat that's pretty straight that's that's uh that's a, a good mat I, I think that mat would probably look pretty badass all right so we've got this um i don't know what how do you guys feel, feel about dromai i don't I don't think that compared to Lexi and compared to Briar and compared to Oldham or, you know, and Icelander, I don't feel like too many people absolutely disliked Bromai or felt that the matchup was like so oppressive that they couldn't win. I, I never had a problem with it at all, personally. Um, but I also played a hero that like could deal with her in a way. Nah, you're good, Ted. I mean, dude, this is what we... I, the whole purpose of this is for us to have a conversation and talk about the game and talk about the news, talk about what's going on. So what you're doing is exactly in line with, with what we do. And the, and the more you guys talk, the more we have to talk about. Otherwise, if I were, if I were to go through my <clears throat> quote-unquote script of the show, we'd be done in 45 seconds and I'd be upstairs drinking some coffee, getting ready for work. You know what I mean? So the, the conversation is what drives the, the little... Uh, there's not much news too today. Let's be honest. There's two other cards we can look at. There's Living Legend, and then there's um the same people going around buying all the freaking gold foils from everybody who wins them all <laughs> at all the events and then opening them. It's kind of kind of crazy. Um the expansion slot system is slow. A ready to go CC deck with an updated hero with all the support. Yeah, the, again, the only counter to that, Ted, though, is I, like they've got to have already developed that, right? So I guess they're looking at it like so right now you'd be looking at this going okay let's make sure we start developing a new fi a new dash a new bravo a new katsu like or you know I, I don't know and do you start building those now or do you go down here and be like oh god if these guys are going to get 200 points a, a freaking season and they haven't even had a chance to win an event how fast are these guys gonna you know ll kasai and ko i think have a strong shot 
at LLing really quick. I think Dorinthia Axes, I think more people playing Dor Dory Axes, I think this has a strong chance to LL really quick because that, that deck is oppressive too. Um, and by oppressive, I don't mean unfair. I just mean that like any of these decks that can pump out like 15 damage and like they have an average, they have an average freaking um, ratio of like 18 per turn. Like, because they're blocking and then they're throwing out that damage. Like, it's pretty insane, the, like, the, the power level of the game right now, I think. <clears throat> I'm just excited for what the armory decks can be for new casual players. My favorite thing Yu-Gi-Oh! does is the structured decks, some of which were really good. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, it seems like the armory deck... I'm going to try to find one real quick. It feels to me like the armory deck is going to be Okay. It has to, like, if it doesn't have Majestics in it, it's it's useless, right? We, I think we can all agree that if it doesn't have ex if Majestics in the deck, it's useless. So here's the, the real question, Sloop Dude, and we've already seen the chess piece. They may not actually print or reprint Legendaries in these slots. Like, I would imagine that this deck comes with Beaten Trackers. My, my guess would be that it's going to come with Beaten Trackers. But well, if they make... E card equivalents to legendaries. I don't know, man. Like, what does that do to the legendary? Or if they make new legendaries, or if they reprint legendaries, that could be, that could be a little bit of a backlash issue as well. I don't think that they would reprint legendaries into this product. I don't like. I don't think you throw a scowling flesh bag into this product. But who am I? I don't know. I mean, what what headpiece are you gonna put in there? Like, that's gonna be worth a damn. Do you throw Arcanite Skullcaps in this bitch because nobody cares? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's my only concern with, like, what are they going to do? What are they going to put in there? Because if they... We all... I think we all can admit. There is a... Um, if you, this gets somebody 70% of the way, so you're saying, you're saying that this should be fully... Because it says the ease of access to Classic Constructed. Notice that it doesn't say down here... It doesn't say... This is a tournament winning deck. It says this is going to ease you into classic constructed, just like you're saying, Sloop. So maybe, maybe this is everything but legendaries. Because I think we, I think there's nobody on this channel right now that, that wouldn't admit that pretty much the difference between like a tournament viable deck and a non tournament deck would probably be the equipment. Um, if, if you're not running, you know, balance of justice or something into some of these matchups. You're putting yourself at such... Um, you're putting yourself at... Oh, yeah, Knucklehead. I forgot about that one, Sloop. Um, at such a disadvantage compared to the other players that you're probably going to lose anyway. So, um, you know... You know what would be cool? Is... I think we talked about it, Sloop, in one of our calls. But it would be cool if in these decks... They also listed, like, the upgrade potential. And they said, like, hey... Oh, by the way, you should probably get three Blood Rush Bellows, which I would have to imagine Blood Rush Bellow is in this. I don't know how you do it without, but maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's straight from, uh, maybe it's cards straight from heavy hitters only. I don't know. But um, I, I feel like if you had like a chart that said, hey, here's, here's what you have, whatever. Here's the cards in your deck that you have. And here are some upgrades you may consider over time if you decide to keep this deck and go into the tournament pro level scene and that would be a cool way to like kind of like show people what to look at then they can go price things they can make a plan i don't know i don't know maybe maybe nobody cares but i feel like there's an opportunity here we'll just got to see how they execute it i don't know also i i do genuinely think i think man so what what happens now with the with the format of cc Dromai is gone, but I'll be honest with you, I don't think Dromai... Did Dromai really hold back that many fleet people? Seriously, though? What, like, what did it hold back? Some of the ninjas, maybe? Serious question, though, guys. Like, somebody help me out here. Who did Dromai hold back? Because I know Prism. Prism had a very, really bad matchup, apparently, into Dromai. So maybe Prism comes on board a little bit. I'm sure a lot of Illusionist Dromais are going to probably switch right to Prism. Um and pick her up if they haven't already and practice her and get better at her. But I don't see... I don't really know. Yeah, Riptide, that's fair too, but I think Riptide's held back because he's just not very good. 
and his card pool isn't very good. Held back Arachne. Nah, I mean, again, I, you guys named two of the literally like the worst heroes in CC right now. I don't think that they were oppressed by Dromai because Dromai wasn't Dromai wasn't making up that much of the field, right? Was she? I mean, she she beat Riptide, sure. But like, we're talking about this guy. We're talking about like that this guy's gonna be unleashed through the dogs of war. He's gonna come out here and he's gonna dominate now that Dromai's gone. I don't think so. I think he's still dead. I think Arachne, who didn't get any points this season, like. You guys just named the two heroes that didn't have not gained any points. The only two heroes. And we're saying that those are the ones that are going to pop off now. I don't I don't know. I don't know if I believe it. I think they need more than drum my LLing. Dude, Tekla Vossen just doesn't exist, huh? Uzuri is probably the biggest gate kept deck. Okay. What's up, Postponed? How you doing? Uh, Prism was real bad in drum and Uzi. Okay. All right. So, Uzuri, I can see. Because she's she's had some, like, some success, some not success. But other than that, like, what is... I mean, seriously, what other hero... Oh, uh, okay. The ALS loop helped uh, make it no, no longer free. Yeah, but I think, I think at that point, the damage had been done, right? Like, uh, we're already this deep into the season, and people finally started to do that, like, what, two weeks ago that we started really hearing about that? Um, and I, you know, I don't know if it's even relevant anymore. So if we're looking at the leaderboard, like who do we think is going to start taking these top spots? Does Kano, do, do people start playing more Kano? Does Prism come back up? Do these, do these aggro, crazy aggro decks just start running amok? You know, I, I really do. I mean, I've seen, I've seen some really great Dories. I've seen some great, um, Great Kasai's. I've seen great KOs. I've seen great Victors. I've seen great Prisms. Uh, even Levia. I'm just going down the list, guys. Trying to, like Bolton. I've seen do good stuff. Bolton's a little bit. I think Bolton's a little bit more hit or miss, depending on like how quickly he gets uh, the cards on the table that he needs. Kano is just kind of a pitch stack race. Um. Damn, I, I I don't I feel like the I feel like not much has changed with the meta with Dromai out. And what was she doing? She was like being represented by only one or two of the top eight spots, right? And that's pretty decent. I think she had a decent conversion rate to day twos, but I really I just I guess my, my whole point with this is trying to think about like is this hero I don't feel like held back so many people. Uh, are so many heroes as a lot of the other ones like like Icelanders and stuff that I mentioned or Lexi's to just straight Lexi Lexi felt like the algorithm of fab era like it's like all right we just gotta do the most things that we can every single time what's up Ashen what's up Andrew I don't know that much changes in terms of like who we expect at the top what have my boy Bravo too huh Bravo's like dying poor Bravo people like Victor more than Bravo right now um, and then I also heard somebody, one of you guys said on one of the podcasts, I think I heard recently that warmongers may be coming back into, uh, play. And I, I definitely think that's absolutely a very good judgment right there. I believe that warmongers is now going to be like in almost every deck. If I had to guess, in fact, warmongers is probably why I have such a struggle into like Kasai's and stuff and, uh, Dory's because they're able to pump and react like nonstop. So I, I do need to probably go ahead and plop my three um, warmongers in because that'll handle, you know, help me with all of the ninjas, the rune blades, and the freaking warriors now who are all coming up. Burns of the past too, yeah. So we'll definitely see some, I think we'll see some sideboard option changes. It held back characters that couldn't go wide, but more to the point, it forced people to tailor their decks to beat it. Yeah, so Andrew, you're just talking about like you're talking about like changing your your card options and building your sideboard directly to make sure that you can handle probably one Dromai at least in the top eight, if not more. Uh almost of every event since what Pro Tour Baltimore? Is that like like since Mara basically put Dromai sort of like on the map there at Pro Tour Baltimore? And then of course they got Tome of Imperial Flame, which bumped her up even more. I feel like, you know, she's always been prevalent but not dominating so to speak Vic victor the son of bravo and balda that would be a cool story 
that would be a cool story but then he would have the flow and he as far as i know does does victor even do any like uh tales of aria elementalish stuff because he should right don't all guardians are he's a, he's a different he's not like a guardian victor's like a a solanian warrior i guess almost more than he is a like a true guardian like oldham and bravo and starvo right like those are like those are like guardians of the lore sense coming from aria from the flow i feel like victor is just like a big strong dude <laughs> and balda balda might be the same thing but maybe balda is just a big strong woman so yeah that would be cool if, if uh <laughs> he's like a, a demigod or something driving over work rich guardian there you go yeah he's a rich guardian instead of a uh a flow guardian but we did see some changes here already um just to point out 19 listings of tomotai 17 li listings of dominia 25 listings of dracona optimi the dragons the small dragons i have not seen that much of a pump in numbers but the ones that are being used like actually in the deck primarily um there are a lot of listings but the pricing is still pretty balanced uh 15 there used to be a rule i had i would i would all these i would buy these as soon as they got the 20 dollars or less and so like i don't know how much lower they can go but i was just pulling them out of my collection recently and they, they still look great uh tomatai down from like 115 to 98 dollars i bought one at 95 <laughs> yesterday just curious to see like how low will this this card actually go and pick these up and i think it's time to start getting some dominions and optimize so we'll see i'm just showing this right now to monitor the effect of a hero specializations falling in price um after they l out surprisingly i don't know if people are still traveling or what surprisingly i haven't seen that much act you know shift other than the initial the initial weekend on like friday saturday when she was like it was like determined she was going to ll we saw more listings come in and undercutting happen but it really hasn't happened much more after that um andrew money is the best superpower look at batman and iron man <laughs> yeah there you go the rich guardian victor uh we're gonna get into victor and, and um olympia and all that stuff pretty soon here victor is more cunning than strong if you read the story he bribes his way into a win by getting people to tell about his opponent's weaknesses and spike his drinks thinking man's guardian yeah i mean he's He's a piece of shit, basically. He is. So, here we go. Let's keep an eye on that. Oh, and Flamescale Furnace, which I didn't have on there. Flamescale Furnace is getting a little bit beat up right now, which is good for people that want one. All right. Speaking of Victor, faded into the transition. Thank you, folks. All right. Visit the Goldmain Estate. I don't know where this is. I'm guessing it's in Solania. I mean, does anybody know exactly where this, where his estate is? Because he, he serves Soul, right? I think. Um, so here's their estate. Create a gold token. This is a blue block three cost one for uh, those home gamers out there that aren't seeing the screen. They're just listening. If you control three or more gold, create that many might tokens. So... Imagine Victor with three gold tokens and three might tokens on a turn. This feels like this is like an end game ender. I don't know because you're going to what like if you were to pitch to three of these gold or two of them, you're probably going to have two to three extra resources sitting there on the table with the full grip. And three might for your first card. So, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be pretty a pretty big attack here. Uh, coming at your face. Whatever it is. <laughs> you don't even need to heave a pulverize or whatever. You just fuck heaving it. Just throw it out there. You had a game last night. You made it five gold against Ninja. That card would have been horrific. Yeah, that would have been cool. You, you would have had six gold and six might. You would have enough gold. Does, does Victor ever get to the point where he raises an army? Because, like, what else are you, you going to do with all that gold, man? It's a lot. Um, Let's see. Let's pull up Victor real quick. Victor. Where you at, gold main? Uh, first time you turn in, you create a gold token. In fact, you control, draw a card. So you would also draw a card. So you'd have, I didn't even think about that. But you would get, you're going to get the extra card off of this, right? 
So you get you draw a card when you create the gold gold token. So you're gonna draw the card. So you got your your card. So you're now card positive, and you're getting most likely might tokens because I don't know if you. I mean, I guess you do this if you're desperate to just draw a card, but like you're probably gonna only do this when you get the might tokens too. Yeah, that's 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 pretty strong. That's a pretty powerful turn. I mean. You, the only thing is, though, you've got to have go again, right? Or, or rouse the ancients into uh, something, don't you? I mean, you've got to have a way to take advantage of all this gold and all this might. So are you really, I feel like you really kind of need like an agility token or something to go with that to pay for it all. Otherwise, you're going to be doing like a giant pump attack, essentially. Um, I don't know. But Victor, I can just... I'm, I'm imagining Victor is already doing well in the current meta. It seems like I hear people winning on Victor all the time. People are... I, I can tell you at our local meta, people are... Um, people are already playing Victor over other Guardians. Guardian with Daddy... Yeah, exactly, Joe. Guardian with Daddy's credit card. He's got the gold, gold coins just planking around in his pocket from his Daddy's treasury. Um, it has go again on the CRD on the card. It has go again on the card. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's not what I meant. Yeah, yeah, that, Andrew, I meant like, I mean, if you're if you're trying to attack with a big giant attack and you've got all these extra resources, it would make sense that you want to do two attacks, right? Why, why else would you want five cards? You know, five cards and all these extra resources, if not to, you know. Do a multiple attacks. You're setting up your next turn, but like, what else are you gonna do? You gotta like set up an agility token at some point. Uh, visit the KFC. Dang, Leroy. His gold shield makes more sense with this card. Get your cold foil of that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Victor Goldmain shield. I got two of those. That's um, the other thing. You know, if imagine if if Victor had this ability to. <laughs> destroy a gold and create a new shield or something like that that would be crazy too you could use you could use victor's gold shield as a gold and then like visit this anvil the golden anvil and bring it back it almost sounds like this card was supposed to be a victor card and then they changed it to olympia i don't know the golden anvil allows you to destroy gold and re replace it with equipment D does this not sound like it's a victor card straight out of or omegas like am i crazy uh anyway Victor specialization, this counts as gold, so you can get your two block onto it. You know, use it as gold, but alas, we don't have that. <laughs> oh, I was like, why is this card here? It says victory in it. I got it. I got it. I see it now. Finally, your spoiler card is good. I guess. I guess. <laughs> because this counts as the gold, right? Is what you're saying. So essentially, TCG Ted, what, what we have here is as long as you have a shield... You've got one gold. There's starting stake and stuff that could give you gold, or you can win clashes to get gold. This will give you, so all you gotta do basically, Ted, is have your shield equipped, generate one gold somewhere else, and then play this card. So it's gonna be fairly easy to get this card on the table, I think is what your point is. Yeah, with the um, the gold tokens. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see, but that's, uh. That's a lot of gold and that's a lot of might. So that next turn is going to be, I mean, the turn after you play this card is going to be a big turn. Or I guess you just also like, I guess you don't have to use the gold tokens. You can just let those suckers sit there on the table for the rest of the match. And you still have three plus might tokens. Hey, it's a really good card. I don't know. Does anybody think that it's not a good card though? I mean, are we just beating a dead horse here talking about how good it is? And then this, let's talk about Olympia real quick. I thought this was really interesting too. Go so Olympia. I kind of wish this was not specialization, to be honest. I wish this was a warrior specialization, not Olympia. Um, I think this is really cool. Uh, the first time each of your attacks wins a wager, create a gold token for Olympia. And then Olympia's new specialization has an additional cost to play this. Destroy X gold you control. Equip X weapons and or equipment from your inventory. So your inventory, you're going to create your sideboard of extra armor, I'm assuming. Maybe you're running parry blade 
and you can break the parry blade and then you know get get a block out of it and then re-equip something else to replace it later um that'd be kind of interesting maybe we need speaking to a manager at little betsy's pizza there you go we need um everybody wants the uh caber i see a lot of people asking for the caber from betsy i am glad it's a specialization so i can play it in shiana how does it help you in shiana though like changing out your equipment just giving you extra abilities i guess i mean shiana uses everything doesn't she Does Shiana have a lot of, like, good ways to generate gold, though, Thomas? Later on, Sarge. Have a good day. Get some sleep. Get some sleep. You've been you've been driving all day long. <laughs> when I'm looking at this, I think this is a really cool card. Um, I think... Does this... Does this allude to the idea that um, Olympia is going to become a very defensive, like second third cycle late game killer and, and like are, and maybe he needs another card or two to like really flush him out but you talk about a fridge you talk about a fridge you can put some pretty ridiculous equipment on get some really big value out of equipment that breaks we have cards that are like if you have less equipment than your opponent, like uh, last ditch, not la it was la not last ditch effort, but we do have cards where you could like intentionally break your equipment and be lower life and blah, blah, blah. Have less tokens. Attack for a really big number. Like re-equip everything. You've gotten all that block. You've gotten the extra benefit of the cards. And then you're pulling this out too. Parry Blade and Bastion of Unity, then switch to Decimator Axe or something close to the guy. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. Post uh, postponed. I like that too. You'd have to basically, yeah, you'd have to break Galmanon yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. So you'd have to break all of your weapons and, and, and equipment to be able to switch to a two hand, right? So that makes sense. John also wants to play a lot of blues and doesn't have a ton of great blues. Oh, okay, cool, Thomas. Yeah, see, I, I knew there was a point. Um, I don't play Shiana, but we have a couple people in the channel that actually really enjoy Shiana. Um, so I knew that there was something that I didn't know. Um, Bastion of Unity. Let me, let me get familiar with that real quick. All right. So this is... Um, when this defends together with a card from hand, this gets plus one until end of turn. So this will get you... What? This goes to two. Um, so you block two and then you break it. Okay. Yeah. So you get that. Plus you get the parry blade. Um, Passion of Duty. This might be... I mean, Unity is good because you get a Seismic Surge token off of Unity, right? So if you were to block with your shield and the weapon that, with, that has attack uh, six or more, right? You would get a Seismic Surge. Is that how that works? Or just any other card in hand, you get a Seismic Surge, I think. But... Oh, that's a warrior though. That's guardian. Oops. So, yeah. So never mind. I, 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 yeah. I just saw that that was guardian. All right. I'm trying to look at it. Yeah. I guess you're right. That's that. That's gotta be the intention there, right? Postponed. But do you only want one weapon? As I guess you don't have as much. Do you really only want one weapon though? As uh, Olympia, are you running a lot of attack actions and then swinging once? Yeah. This is. It's gonna be interesting. I wonder what people are. What it does do is it opens up deck building a lot. This is the first time we've ever been able to, besides like an assassin, I guess, to really like destroy all your equipment and then re-equipment. But like right here, you get two block there, you get you get two from the shield, and then you come back in with a decimator axe to close. I, I, I do like what you're saying there. I like that idea. Uh, you kind of like, uh, like I didn't like Tomo Dromai. Yeah. Yeah. Jedi, I, I think that Victor is going to be a pretty strong guardian. <laughs> I think Victor is already a strong guardian. It doesn't really take much thinking because he's already doing well. But that card definitely gives him a lot of support too. This will be fun. I, I think this will be really interesting to see what people come up with to get the most out of this card. Is this card good enough though, in your opinion, though, postponed? You seem to like have some thoughts on it. Is, is this card good enough to like build your deck? around this concept though 
because you're you're gonna be reducing a lot of your sideboard to be able to do this i mean i guess it's not really reducing it it's gonna be the essentially it's going to be the same amount of sideboard that most most heroes have i guess probably three or four pieces i guess three probably be the most give your axe give your axe you have a couple pieces of armor that you break you know like crown of uh crown of providence right something like that Olivia has been the best with hatches by far, so this card is somewhat disappointing for me. Jove, yeah, I, I think that this card kind of alludes to the idea that maybe you don't play hatchets with him. Maybe we've been playing him more of an aggro build, and he's supposed to be more of a, a defensive build. I'm not sure. What's up, Grand Engine? Biggest issue is still winning wagers to get set gold, and he cannot dominate or overpower the wagers at will. Well, okay, I mean if if victor does this let me, let's real quick maybe i maybe i can call a judge here all right so victor's orum agus counts as a gold right but if i do if you control no gold tokens create a gold token so am i understanding this correctly let's just put it out there postponed why would i not just use starting stake to give myself a gold if I don't have one, right? And then now I've got a gold token and my shield that counts as gold. Then all you have to do is play this card, which creates a gold token, and that gives you the three gold mites, three mites. Let's go again. I don't know. Or are you still talking about Olympia? I, I we're, we're kind of going back. Sorry, I'm kind of going back and forth between Guardian and Warrior. I understand this with like, <clears throat> like his first specialization is way better. Well, okay, but the shield says it counts as a gold. It doesn't say that it counts as a gold token. Is that not like you get my point there? Is there has that been defined in the rules like a rules update? Like this counts as a gold. And the other one says it's a gold token. If you control no gold tokens. I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you, Postpone. I think we're I think we're all on the same page with this. Like this seems I, I feel like with this. I feel like this is the Olympia one needs some more stuff to go with it that we haven't seen yet, is what I feel like. Uh, shield counts as a gold, so you can't... Yeah, so... Uh, and then the shield is not a gold token. Yeah, we definitely probably need some clarification there for all of us. Because I don't know each one is, like... I don't know if, if there's a difference right now. Right, real quick, I'm trying to like, rub my eye. Um, But I'm pretty sure that they would have put a token at the end of this if they intended it to actually be used as a gold token there. You know what I mean? But we'll see. Also, real quick, while I've got everybody's attention, don't forget, this Saturday is Doomsday Cup number five. There's a hype video out for it. It is a free online tournament done through our Discord on this channel. It'll be Saturday. This Saturday, guys, I know some people have ProQuest, whatever, but if you can't make it to ProQuest, we will have people from all over the world on this channel um, Saturday, 11 a.m. We're going to kick off a tournament. We have prizes. I have some cool stuff. I have cards. I have swag from, like, the coaxing i have box breaks stuff like that we're gonna have some cool prizes and it's going to be a long 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 stream we're gonna do the tournament and then i'm gonna continue after the tournament doing a whole bunch more stuff um so if you want to make it join the discord and check that out um orum agus is considered a gold object rules and effects that specify a gold may refer to orum agus rules and effects that specify a gold token all right cool yeah so they did um they did specify that okay very good. Thank you for that clarification. Hatchet, hatchets isn't an aggressive weapon set. It's more of a mid-rangey weapon for grinding and playing two card hands and setting up. Yeah, I guess, Joe, you're fair with that. Like, I guess aggression would be three plus attacks, essentially, or four. Um, my donations. Oh, cool. So, yeah, people have sent in donations as well. Like, donations as in, like, um, cards and stuff for the giveaways. So, yeah, come check us out. Also, Saturday. Speaking of swag, yeah, out, out games. Look. Hey, what's up, Gunter9? Exactly, the release notes, the clarification notes. 
Speaking of Out Out Games, Gout Out Out, thanks for hanging out with us, dude. Out Out is the uh, creator of Fable, and he sent us, uh, or we've got some cool playmats from Out Out. So we will be giving away some uh, Out Out Games uh, Fable playmats too, man. So well, thanks for being out here and representing. Again, that's all Saturday. If you guys want to hang out with us Saturday, check it out. Uh, join the Discord. Message me. Um, a couple of people have sent donations. I've got my own cards and stuff that I'm going to give out as well. There will be there will be prizes for the players, prizes for the winner, and prizes for the spectators. And then after the tournament, because this tournament is existing to celebrate um, 4,000 subscribers, technically 1,000, but whatever. Um, um, we will be going on to a marathon stream after that. I will be going 12 plus hours. And then the more like, I guess, hype and channel members and subscribers that we get, we're going to add time to the clock and we're going to keep going. We're going to correlate IRL streams at the uh, LGS. We're going to have Talishar matches. We're going to have collection reviewing. We're going to have box and case breaks. I'm literally sitting here looking at like uh, two cases of Welcome to Wraith. Uh, I got a case of Tales of Aria first coming. I got some Everfest coming. Um, so it's it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys can uh, come and join it and check it out with us. But we have a a YouTube video that if you want to check it out, it's called something like the most extreme hype flesh and blood event ever to get more information about it. I'm just taking a second to plug it because I do have spaces open for players. We are looking for players. It's open entry round robin cut to top eight. It will be, I, I believe it's going to be four rounds of CC and one round of blitz. All right. We're going to have some fun. So I've already seen some of the decks and stuff. Some people are taking it very seriously. Some people are taking it like a, like a joke to have some fun everybody does their own thing but anyway uh i just wanted to plug that so thanks to anybody who's who actually stuck around for that little plug there uh appreciate you guys very much i know most people probably don't want to hear that kind of stuff but that's going on there all right <clears throat> if we'll, we'll circle back here because oftentimes what happens is people don't join till like 20 minutes in but dromai ash artist we're we're all awaiting the probably 10 page paragraph of dromai lling and I think everybody knows and everybody sympathizes that Mara Ferris's um, hero is gone forever. <laughs> um, and uh, I think I think I think most of these dromites are going to switch to either the new illusionist Enigma or possibly um, possibly the prism. Uh, what is she called? I keep forgetting her like actually Awakener of Soul. Yeah, I keep wanting to say like the one that's sitting on the throne. And then we talked about a little bit about the armory decks. Sloop Doop brought this up, you know, kind of speculating what kind of power cards, what kind of power level is this deck going to be? Um, and are they going to use this? TCG Ted mentioned this as well, but are they going to use armory decks as a way to reintroduce LL heroes into the CC format? Like, are we going to get like a new, I don't know, a new Dromai? With new abilities, new hero abilities, new weapon or something. And then she comes out there and brings back the Dragon Boys. And if they do, will these prices go back up? Uh, will different dragons come out? I, I wish we'd gotten some more dragons for a while now. But I've got my eye on these guys. I am. Uh, I, I put a fair warning in my Discord. I am buying again. So um, if you guys have Homotize, Dominias, Dracona Optimize, and uh, you uh, <clears throat> want to sell a bunch of them... <laughs> Hit me up in the Discord. Uh, sub Dro Migo, how you doing, my man? The symp no sympathy for the devil? Come on, man. Come on, we're not all walking a straight line here. We got Gunther, we got people that want to play Dromai. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's kind of it for today's recap. No new news. Part the Misfail spoiler website isn't even updated with eight. Uh, with oh, it did. It got updated like today. That's funny. All right, so people are working on the website. I would expect that if somebody's out there and they're working on the website already and they've updated it like literally this morning because this was not updated last night when I went to bed, um, we should get the LL article about Dromai up pretty soon. We'll check that out probably tomorrow. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you hanging out with us every single day. Click the subscribe button. Come back and join us. We try to just do things to have fun with the community, go to events, enjoy the game of flesh and blood, talk about the news on the game, uh, enjoy ourselves as a community, as a group here. Thank you for being here. Make sure you're a friendly competitor at your local armories and try to invite somebody new. Come check out the badass game, Flesh and Blood. Appreciate you all. Love you. Have a wonderful day and uh, kick ass this week. 
day one. Set your tone for Monday. Go out there and kick ass, take names. I'll see you. Peace.